Hello everyone and welcome to this video. From this video, we transition from traffic stream characteristics to queuing theory and we start the discussion with going over a couple of distributions that we use a lot in traffic engineering that they represent the probability of having a certain number of vehicles arriving to a certain point and also the distribution of the headways between them and after that we get into some details on queuing theory and we will be learning different types of queuing systems and how to analyze them so before getting into um, the details of queuing theory, we want to talk about vehicle arrival uh, at an entry point to a transportation system. This could be a highway facility like a freeway, this could be a toll booth or uh, anything else uh, that you think about, but let's focus on, on a freeway, a part of a freeway. And as you know, traffic is not uniformly distributed so if you keep measuring or counting the number of vehicles that arrive you're not going to see something like every five seconds you're going to have one vehicle and that is going to continue maybe if, like you're going to have like two seconds and then one vehicle arrive and then six seconds and another vehicle arrives and this headway between vehicle arrival is different also if you count a number of vehicles, let's say in one minute time intervals, it's very rare that you, you count, for example, something like 10 vehicles arriving in each of those one minute time intervals. So in one minute time interval, you may get uh, something like 30 vehicles arriving in the other one. Um, you get like 10 vehicles arriving in the other one, 20 vehicles, and you're going to see a distribution and number of vehicles that are going to arrive in each of those time intervals is different. So what we want to do today is that we want to start from learning how to estimate the probability of the number of vehicles that are going to arrive in each time interval based on some information that we have and the main piece of information that we have here is the average arrival rate of vehicles. For example, if someone tells you that the flow rate is 120 vehicles per hour, so you, you know that average arrival and then you want to know what is the probability of having a certain number of vehicles arrive within each of these time intervals. That's the first thing that we are going to start working on it today. And then if we have time in this video, we switch gears and we learn how to estimate uh, the headway between vehicles not estimate the headway but probability of having headways greater than a certain value or something like that right so we we'll get to know how to do so so let's start with probability of having a certain number of vehicles to arrive uh, within a time interval that has a duration of t so the distribution that we often use for this purpose is poisson distribution and i'm showing it on this uh, slide uh, so that you see what is the uh, what is the equation so p of n n is the number of vehicles so if you say the probability of having 10 vehicles to arrive. N is going to be equal to 10, and then you're de you want to determine the value of P10, which is going to be something between 0 and 1. So if you say the probability of having 10 vehicles arrive within a 2-minute interval, then your T is going to be equal to 2 in that example. Okay? So the probability of having 10 minutes, uh, 10 vehicles to arrive within two minutes. That would be P of 10, which is equal to lambda into 2 to the power of n 
e to the power of lambda into 2 over n factorial and n here is 10 okay so what is lambda the only thing that i don't know there actually this t in our example also was 2 right so the only thing that i don't know there is lambda lambda is average vehicle flow or arrival rate in vehicles per unit time so someone may give you the hourly flow rate okay and if you have that you need to find lambda in the same units that you have for t so here if you have t in units of minutes lambda should be vehicles per minute so that this term that i have here ends up being vehicles and e of course is the base of the natural logarithm so this is not very complex this is the um, formulation or equation for poisson distribution n is the number of vehicles t is the duration and lambda is the average vehicle flow rate so what i want to do is to get into more details through an example that we are going to go through so let's say we have a one hour traffic volume of 120 vehicles so what does what does that mean that means that my lambda is 120 vehicles per hour okay during which the analyst is interested in obtaining the distribution of one minute volume counts one minute that means that my t is equal to one minute okay so now if i multiply lambda with t my units do not match okay so i'm gonna have an issue i need to either compare t from minute to one hour to the hour for uh, unit or convert lambda to vehicle per minute okay but we, we are going to see that in, in in the next slide but here is the thing they want to know the distribution of one minute volume count so they want to know what is p of n equal to zero p of n equal to one p of n equal to two and so on and they want to know how this looks like and what is the distribution of the number of vehicles that arrive so we need to determine all of these following a Poisson distribution so let's first focus on fixing the unit of lambda so lambda is 120 vehicles per hour if I want to convert it to vehicles per second I need to divide it by 3600 so if you do that your lambda would be 0 0.033 vehicles per second and now you can multiply that by the duration of t which is 60 seconds that is going to give you a total of two vehicles so what that means is that every minute on average i'm going to have two vehicles so i can deal with this in a different way so lambda is 120 vehicles per hour i'm going to convert it to vehicles per minute so i'm going to have two vehicles per minute i divide 120 by 60. okay now my lambda t would be two vehicles per minute multiplied by one minute and i'm going to have two vehicles same number <clears throat> and if you do this in vehicle per hour you're going to get the same number again for lambda t so we know the value of lambda t that is equal to 2 so here we used minute and vehicle per minute now if i want to find the probability of having zero vehicles my n is going to be equal to 
zero. My lambda t is going to be equal to two, and my t is going to be equal to one. So let's plug all of these in the equation that we have for Poisson distribution for p of n equal to zero. So if you do so, you're going to have two to the power of n. So this this part is lambda t to the power of n. Then you have e to the power of negative lambda t. So I have e to the power of negative 2 here. And then I have everything divided by n factorial. n is 0. So I have 0 factorial, which is equal to 1. So 2 to the power of 0 is 1. e to the power of negative 2 is 0 0.1353. So the probability of having 0 vehicles arriving during a one minute interval is 0.1353 or 13 and a half percent either way of showing this is okay now i want to find p of one two and so forth so if p of having one vehicle is going to be lambda t to the power of n so 2 to the power of 1, e to the power of negative lambda t divided by 1 factorial. So if you do the math, you're going to get 0 0.2707. Now I'm multiplying that by 60 minutes because we want to know the distribution within an hour, right? And in each hour, I have 60 one-minute time intervals. So if the probability of having a vehicle in one-minute time interval is 27.07, the expected number of intervals that I'm going to have with one vehicle in them is going to be this probability multiplied by the number of time intervals, and it's 16.24. I do the same for p of n equal to 2. So the value for the probability is going to be 20, 0.2707. I multiply it by 60. I'm going to get 16.24. I do that for p of 3. I get 0.1804. I multiply it by 60. I get 10. And I continue that. So rather than doing this all, um, like this, I'm going to put those in an Excel sheet. So I have n that goes from 0 to 10. Okay. And then for each of those, I determine the probability as you saw. So I have already determined probability for n equal to 0, 1, 2, 3. For n equal to 4 to 10, we also determine the probability here. And you can see that I have written them here. Okay, now you see that when I get to 10, the probability is going to be 0 with 4 uh, digits. So pretty much it becomes really small and you don't need to continue after that point. And here on this column, I'm finding CDF. So this is cumulative distribution, distribution uh, function. How do you find that? So for n of 0 it's going to be equal to pmf for n of 1 it's going to be equal to this plus this and for n of 2 it's going to be equal to this plus this and you see that when you go to n equal to 9 or so it reaches 1 and then stays at 1 so if you know if you want to know the frequency like what we did in the previous time you just multiply each of these numbers by 60 and that is going to give you the frequency for each of those and you can see that the summation of frequency is going to be 60 because we have 60 time intervals in a in a one hour interval so now if you just draw the histogram of this you're gonna have your distribution so i have just put those numbers side by side 
and if I go to the next slide and draw this, you can see the distribution of vehicle arrival. So here I have the frequency of time intervals. We expect to see eight time intervals during which no vehicle arrive. We expect to see 16 time intervals during which one vehicle arrive, 16 time intervals during which two vehicles arrive, and this 16 is this number, right? We expect to see 11 or 10 and a half time intervals during which three vehicles arrive. We expect to see five time intervals during which four vehicles arrive and so on. So when we get to 10, we expect to see no time interval during which 10 vehicles arrive. So here we used Poisson distribution to get uh, the distribution of time intervals um, that we have based on the number of vehicles that are going to arrive. So now, if I ask you what is the probability of having between one and three vehicles arrive during a one minute interval, how can you determine that? I want you to think about that for a second. The probability of having between one and three cars arriving in a one minute interval. So one thing that you learned is that the distribution that we are using is not continuous. It's a discrete distribution, right? So if you want to know the number of vehicles that arrive between one, uh, then the, the probability of having between one and three cars arriving within a single minute time interval, you need to find probability of having one car, add probability of having two cars, and add probability of having three cars. And this summation is the answer. So how do I write it? Probability of having n greater than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to 3 is equal to probability of n equal to 1, n equal to 2, and n equal to 3. We have all of those numbers. Here I have written the numbers in percentage. You can write them in real numbers. It's going to be the same. So the probability is going to be 72.2% or 0.722. That is the probability of having something between um, one and three cars arriving within a time interval. I may have a different question. What is the probability of having more than six cars? Probability of having more than six cars. So this is P of N greater than six. It doesn't say, it doesn't say probability of equal or more than six car so i don't have an equality sign there so this is equal to probability of n equal to seven plus probability of n equal to eight plus that 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 right and you need to keep going now in our example here we saw that when you get to 10 the probability is very small so you can really find probability of n equal to seven plus eight plus nine and you're done but in a general case, if these probabilities don't get small, you need to keep adding numbers, right? You need to keep adding numbers and you need to go maybe up to 100 based on the number that you have or, or a lot more, right? So because of that, rather than finding P of N greater than 6 by summing these probabilities, we do something else. We say that P of N greater than 6 is equal to 1 minus probability of N smaller than or equal to 6. And if you want to do that, you can find probability of N uh, smaller than or equal to 6 by finding a P probability of having 0 vehicle, 1 vehicle, 2 vehicle, 3, 4, 5, and 6 vehicles and just add them together. So that's what I have done here. So 1 minus 0.135 plus 0.271 plus another 0.271 and you go up to P of N equal to 6. 
So you add all of those, you get 0.995 or 0.005 or 0.5%. So that is the probability of having more than six cars during a one minute time interval. And if you think about it, our volume was 120 vehicles per hour, right? Our lambda was 120 vehicles per hour, or on average, two vehicles per minute. So that's why that probability of having zero vehicle, one vehicle, two vehicle, and three vehicle, these are like significant and they are large numbers. One with, but when you get to having seven vehicles, eight vehicles, or nine vehicles, or more than that, all those probabilities, when you sum them up together, you get like half a percent. So the majority of vehicles, 99.5% of, um, sorry, not vehicles, 99.5% of time intervals have six vehicles or fewer arriving during each of them. Okay, let's continue. So we talked about Poisson distribution and this was giving us the probability of having n vehicles arriving within a time interval. Now from that distribution, we want to derive a distribution that gives us the probability of having a certain headway between vehicles. For example, a headway between two and three seconds between vehicles that arrive. So the probability of the number of vehicles that arrive, if that follows a Poisson distribution, we can show that the probability of headway is going to follow a negative exponential distribution. So let's see what we have here. I'm going to start with this equation that I have. Lambda or average vehicle arrival. Now I write it in vehicle per second. Okay. If lambda is in vehicle per second, Q or flow, I define, I define it as flow rate. And if that goes, if that follows a vehicle per hour distribution, lambda can be found by dividing Q by 3600. So with that, we are converting vehicle, vehicle per hour to vehicle per second. So this is really an equation that converts units for us. So let's substitute lambda by Q divided by 3600 in the Poisson distribution. So P of N is equal to lambda T to the power of N. So rather than lambda T, so let me write P N for you one more time, is lambda T to the power of N, E to the power of negative lambda T divided by N factorial. Okay, so I'm replacing lambda with Q over 3600. So for lambda t, I have qt over 3600 to the power of n. For e to the negative lambda t, I'm going to have e to the negative qt over 3600, and then I have n factorial. I divide everything by n factorial. So I have a bullet here that I want you to read it. And then I talk about it. So what does it say? The probability of having no vehicles arrive, no vehicles arriving in a time interval. So what does that mean? No vehicle arrive is P of N equal to zero. The probability of having no vehicles arrive is equivalent to the probability of having headways that is greater than duration of that time interval. So 
it's equal to the probability of having a headway that is greater than or equal to the duration of t okay that makes sense right so now what that means is that i can go into this equation and put n equal to zero and that is going to give me the probability of headway being greater than t so if i do that here i'm going to have this to the power of zero so that is going to be one and here i'm going to have zero factorial which is going to be equal to one so what i'm left with is e to the power of negative qt over 3600 that's what you see here so probability of h greater than or equal to t is equal to e to the negative qt divided by 3600 this is a negative exponential distribution what it gives you is the probability of having a headway greater than a certain amount of time for example you can see what is the probability of having a headway that is greater than eight seconds in that case t is going to be eight seconds q is going to be given to you it's going to be flow rate in vehicles per hour and you multiply that by t divided by 3600 so you don't need to fix uh, the unit of q we have already done that and the reason that we have 3600 there is to fix that unit so i already talked about this part we call this negative exponential distribution and a lot of time just for simplicity we call it exponential distribution we just omit the word negative i also want to have a quick note here about a limitation of a poisson distribution in poisson distribution uh, the main assumption is that the average or mean is equal to the variance and if that is not the case then Poisson distribution is not the best way of uh, showing the vehicle arrival so if you collect data and the average number of cars that arrive per time period is significantly different than the variance over all time periods then you cannot use Poisson distribution and you need to go to another distribution maybe negative binomial or something else we don't get into that but that was something that I just wanted to highlight for you and in next slide I want to go through an example very similar to what we did for the Poisson distribution so that you can see how a negative exponential distribution works so here is the example I have we say assume that vehicle arrivals follow a Poisson distribution and we have an hourly traffic flow of 36 vehicles per hour so our Q our Q is equal to I said 36 uh, I apologize 360 vehicles per hour so that is our Q determine the probability that the headway between successive vehicles will be less than eight seconds so this is probability of having h less than eight seconds it also says determine the probability that the headway between successive vehicles will be between eight and eleven seconds so it wants the probability to be greater than 8 and less than 11 seconds so one thing that I want to highlight 
about Poisson, uh, about negative exponential distribution is that unlike Poisson distribution that was discrete, this is a continuous distribution. Okay, so as a result of that, it really doesn't matter if I put equal signs here or not, because probability of H being equal to 8, 11, or any other number is zero, right? It's just a point and the probability of zero. So here, you don't bother put for putting or not putting equality signs. It's just going to be the same thing. The other thing is that if for um, this part B, if you just go and say P of H equal to 8 plus P of H equal to 9 and 10 and 11, that is not going to give you the answer that you want. Why? Because this is a continuous distribution. And this is going to be 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0. So the way that we find the probability is different. Because if you remember what we said in the previous slide was that probability of H greater than T is equal to whatever we had there. Right? For Poisson, we had probability of n equal to a certain number equal to the equation that we had. That's why we could say probability of n between 1 and 3 is equal to probability of n equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3. We cannot say the same thing for negative exponential distribution. So think about how we can find the probability of h less than 8 because our equation is set up as h greater than 8. So let's take a look at the answer to that. So probability of h less than t by definition is equal to 1 minus probability of h greater than t. So I have this equality sign here, but it really is not important. Okay, so if that's the case, probability of H less than 8 is equal to 1 minus probability of H greater than 8. So if we have that, we know that probability of H greater than, uh, smaller than 8 is going to be 1 minus E to the power of negative QT divided by 3600. T is going to be 8. Q is going to be 360. So if you put these numbers there, you're going to have 1 minus e to the power of negative 360 into 8 divided by 3600. And the final number is going to be 0.551 or 55.1%. So the probability of having headways smaller than 8 seconds is 55.1%. So we can use the same trick that we have here for the other part. Let's take a look at that. So by definition, probability of H between 8 and 11 is equal to probability of H less than 11 minus probability of H less than 8. So what is probability of H less than 11? This would be equal to 1 minus probability of H greater than 11. How about here? This is going to be equal to 1 minus probability of H greater than 8. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to have 1 minus probability of H greater than 11 minus probability of H less than 8 or minus Rather than this, I can say 1 minus probability of h, sorry, probability of h greater than 8. I'm not doing that here because I have already found probability of h smaller than 8 in the previous step, right? So then I have 1 minus e to the power of negative 360 into 
my t is now 11 so I have 11 divided by 3600 minus probability of h greater than 8 which is 0.55 if you do the math you're gonna get a value of 1 minus 0.3329 minus 0.551 and that would be equal to 0.1161 all right, I would like to stop here and we will continue our discussion in the next class and we talk about queuing theory. Have a good one.